So I'm not one to believe in conspiracy theories, right? I'm, I'm just a fat brown guy who likes computers. Okay, I, I, I lied. I, I'm, I'm pretty conspiracy theorist kind of coded. One of the ones that I think could be real, of course, uh, are the ones that we live in a simulation, right? It's, it's really probable. We can't unprove the fact that we're not just living in a computer because uh, as we know, computers are getting more advanced nowadays and we go click, clack, click, clack and all of a sudden we can make uh, AI create some crazy stuff. And you can see like how far processing power uh, can go, like what the potential might be for it. And the matter of the fact is that because we can do that, we have no proof that something is making a simulation out of us. You know what I mean? There could be like another layer, another layer, another layer. And we have no way to actually prove that. But of course, today we're not talking about those kind of conspiracy theories. Today we're going to go into whistleblowers. So if you don't know what a whistleblower is, um, let's go ahead and look it up for you. All right. So according to Britannica.com, a whistleblower is an individual who, without authorization, reveals private or classified information about an organization, usually related to wrongdoing or misconduct. Whistleblowers generally state that such actions are motivated by a commitment to the public interest. And for the most part, I pretty much agree with that. I think that if there's something bad going on, the public should know about it, right? We shouldn't just be left in the dark all the time. Well, in some cases, maybe it's like appropriate to let, leave the masses out of it. In a lot of cases where, um, well, let's look at a case like Edward Snowden, right? Edward Snowden released a bunch of tools to the public um, via through a news a bunch of news organizations um, and so what that did was it showed that the US government had been spying on their people for the longest time right we had a whole bunch of tools that could like essentially like database size I don't know what the word is for that uh, it basically made like a database for American citizens just because it was like an excuse to defend america right it was it's always a, def a an excuse to de for defense that's that's what we get out of this like one example was um i don't remember the name of it but you could just type in a name and it'd give you like a search query of like uh of all the, like the information that you have on that person it's yeah everything was insane so when edward snowden came out of course obama was like nah fuck you dog slap that shit and he had to run away to russia and i believe he was in like hong kong first before actually going to russia but you know, that's uh, besides the case. We can look at some other uh, types of whistleblowing. So one of them is Pentagon Papers, uh, where Daniel Eisenberg, an analyst at the RAND Corporation, leaked uh, a report commissioned by the US military about the Vietnam War. Vietnam War, very bad war. We didn't, we did not do anything good there. Uh, in fact, there's still like effects of like Agent Orange going through kids and stuff it, it's complete dog shit worst war we've ever been into in fact you know there's other wars going on right now but we'll talk about that for now uh of course there's edward snowden as we talked about already and another one was chelsea manning and um the guy who led wikileaks julian assange uh in my opinion heroes they're releasing a bunch of data that should be uh released to the public like for example this one is uh, Manning kind of provided a bunch of documents that contain details about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, Afghanistan being my home country, um, which we fucked up a lot in the United States. But um, one of the more notable disclosures was a graphic video of a US Apache helicopter killing 12 civilians, including two Reuters journalists in 2007, which is pretty fucking insane. So I, I gotta say like, you know, whistleblowers are really important. But what we're gonna go into today is actually the airline industry. So you may have already heard about this already, but we're going to go back to March 12th, which was two months ago. So John Barnett became a whistleblower and essentially kind of revealed that Boeing's factories had a bunch of problems about them, right? A prominent Boeing whistleblower, a former quality manager who raised concerns about manufacturing practices at the company's 787 Dreamliner factory, in South Carolina was found dead on Saturday with what appeared to be self-inflicted gunshot wound, according to officials, which is like kind of weird. Why would he essentially like expose this thing and then suddenly die? So it's it's kind of crazy that this guy just kind of ends up dead, right? That's it, it's fucked up. Um, and what they said that it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound, but like, you know, you know 
no, you could angle that. You can angle it in certain ways. You don't have to like fucking do it yourself. You know? There's uh, there's ways to kind of like, you know, if you know what you're looking for, you could fit. You could fake a situation. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Even to like a trained eye. But <clears throat> the quality problems that he was like um, revealing and stuff were <laughs> were like substantiated by the fact that. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the news about this, but there was a plane that was in the air. It was a Boeing 737 Max, and the panel of it flew off, and no one was hurt, luckily. But that's fucking scary. A plane, <laughs> a panel off a plane should not be falling off nowadays. All right, and some people might chop it up to DEI, which is like, no, it's not that at all, dog. It's that these companies, these quality assurance companies, don't care. They they make their money. They're like, okay, let's just, let's fucking leave. We're done for the day. Bye. And they kind of just leave a bunch of these quality assurance problems in the planes. And then all of a sudden it doesn't become a problem until it becomes a problem. And you don't want to be on that plane when it becomes a problem. Right guys. So Mr. Barnett filed the complaint against Boeing with the U S labor department in 2017 under their a under the air 21 whistleblower protection program, which protects employees of plane manufacturers report information pertaining to air carrier safety violations of the company that year. So he even went through like the official channels. He he did everything right, right? He he didn't like just go straight to public like Edward Snowden did, which this was like Obama's criticism. He was like for of Edward, of Edward Snowden. He's like Snowden should have just came to the government. We have a program for that essentially, but who knows if like we would have even gotten any of this data if they didn't drop this, if he didn't drop this information to the public, right? So, uh, when Mr. Barnett, 62, did not show up on Saturday morning and did not answer his phone calls, uh, Mr. Turkowitz said he went, grew concerned and called the hotel. And then, after they called the hotel, he was found dead in his pickup truck in a hotel parking lot. All Right after he reported on this, which is, like, a little bit sus. But, you know, this was, like, a month and a half ago. Why are we talking about this? We go back to May 2nd, which was two days ago as of recording. Joshua Dean here... A former quality auditor at Boeing supplier Spirit Aerosystems, who had flagged safety concerns and alleged misconduct by the aircraft manufacturer, died on Tuesday from a severe and sudden infection. So all of a sudden, these whistleblowers are just collapsing, especially in these airline industry ones. And this is a miss, a miss, like a bunch of like planes that are already like fucking going down and shit. Uh, you know, you're finding a whole bunch of loose screws on them where they're not supposed to be loose. You know, I, I like I feel like I have a loose screw sometimes when I read uh, stuff like this. It's like, why are we, why are we letting this happen, right? <clears throat> Here, let's zoom in for you guys too. My bad about that. So Dean is the second Boeing-linked whistleblower to have died in the last two months, as the company has come under heightened scrutiny. It's like, why are these guys suddenly dying right after they whistleblow? Like, there's already a second one. And that's it in the span of like less than two months, right? It's like, I'm, 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 I try not to be a conspiracy theorist, but sometimes it, it, they just make it too easy. You know what I mean? It's just, it's so easy to just try and connect these dots that are like right in front of your face. Like it's not even like something that you're far reaching, right? You know, there's this conspiracy theories like flat earth, right? Like you have to reach so far to kind of prove flat earth. And you're just like, okay, whatever, <laughs> whatever the fuck you're on about Like just. Just go on about your day. But when it comes to things like this, it, it's happening right in front of your face. Like the Jeffrey Epstein stuff. We but we all know. We all know, right? We all know that he didn't he didn't kill himself. Let's be that. There were no cameras that day all of a sudden. The guards were away. They were doing a whole bunch of random stuff. Okay. <laughs> That's a whole nother video for uh, another time. But this Boeing one, these guys connected to Boeing, whistleblow. They both whistle blew. Both of them. They had nothing else. They seemed perfectly fine before that. All of a sudden, severe death. And Dean's was like way worse, like way crazier too. Uh, the other guy like had just like you know he popped himself in the head sadly, and uh, you know I, he should still be alive. Let's say that right now. He should still be alive. Um, it's a guy who lost his life, and uh, it's it's fucked up. And but if we go to uh, Dean right here, um, it was. It, gosh. So according to a series of public social media posts by Dean's family, he was in very critical condition. 
He tested positive for influenza B and MRSA, a difficult to treat bacterial infection, and developed pneumonia. But we know we know influenza, we get like the vaccine for it like every year. But for some reason, like his influenza was paired with like a whole bunch of other stuff. He developed pneumonia on top of that, the uh, bacterial infection he suddenly got. So he was intubated and put on a dialysis machine as well as airlifted to another hospital to be put an ECMO machine, a form of cardiac and respiratory life support. So he was having like trouble just living in general, right? <clears throat> so the CT scan also showed that he suffered a stroke too. So he just had this whole culmination of just a bunch of shit that kind of just put him out. And like, it's, 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 it's so much, right? You just look at it and you're like, what the freak? So I don't even want to read into more of it. Cause it's, it's pretty, it's pretty fucked up. If you want to go look at yourself, the time link is up there. <clears throat> so this is from Time Magazine itself. But yeah, let's go ahead and recap this, right? So whistleblowers, probably one of the best people in our country because a lot of things that they do is reveal information to the public that wouldn't necessarily be revealed otherwise. And that's a really important thing because like say going back to Edward Snowden again, before he leaked all that stuff, <clears throat> Talking about like how the government was spying on you and stuff, that was all labeled like a conspiracy theory because no one had any proof that was happening. But when Edward Snowden dropped that, guess what? We had the proof. All of a sudden, we were aware of the government spying on all of us, which is like, you know, when you think of a government, you're like, okay, you're probably gonna spy on your foreign adversaries, right? That's gonna happen. So <clears throat> I would expect China to have like some in on all of our data and the United States to have an in on all of like Chinese data you know what I mean but when you look at your government you're like okay they're supposed to be there to protect me but when you find out that you know they're there to just spy on you and kind of like collect data and do what they want with it it gets a little like murky right we I, I personally myself I, I I value my privacy and I think everyone should value their privacy too because it's I, I feel like it's one of our human rights right we we get to be in our homes no one looking at us and just living our lives just how it is <clears throat> but yeah so these two whistleblowers from boeing and boeing related companies suddenly die after whistleblowing on their prospective companies fucked up messed up personally i think it's connected to something but, you know, I got no proof either. But I just wanted to kind of, like, talk about it, get it out there. Let everyone see, like, hey, there's something going on here. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not the biggest conspiracy nut. Like, I, uh, one of them that I do believe is the simulation one. But this, you know, like, it, it, they're just dots that are, like, obvious, right? Where, like, if you don't, if you don't look at the, if you don't look at them and then, connect them together it's kind of like okay well are you looking at all <laughs> you know what i mean uh but yeah i try not to be conspiracy theory coded but you know sometimes it's just it's just too easy uh they make it easy like as jeffrey epstein was but yeah if you guys like what you saw drop a like if you disliked it drop a dislike and uh leave the subscription too while you're at it because we're gonna be doing more of this i'm coming back guys let's go peace